Now, observe what happens when an impulse comes along the nerve. Note first that the outside of the nerve is positively charged relative to the inside. Uh, that is, until an impulse passes, when the outside briefly negative becomes. In this way, nervous impulses hustle quickly down towards the muscle. And here, a similar process acts, whenever a muscle is cause a contract. The only difference in this case is that the change in electrical state is accompanied by physical action, namely, a contraction. These electrical impulses, you may recall, are very rapid and very small, but they've all been measured frequently, and uh, here's the setup for you to see. In Ringer solution, a frog muscle is placed. The nerve is traced and laid across two electrodes with wires attached. Stimulated through these, the muscle contracts. An earth feed is added. The bath run dry. Two recording electrodes are placed nearby. And the impulses which these receive are visible on the CRT and photographed simultaneously. But potential changes on a single end plate are far less simple to demonstrate. Uh, so back to our diagram we'll go. And here we can show uh, how the acetylcholine slightly reduces the end plate potential until it produces by this action the muscular impulse and contraction. The oscilloscope tube should make it quite clear. You see the potential diminishing uh, here, and when it's reduced to a critical fraction, a spike marks the start of both impulse and contraction. The basic principle being made plain, let's try our relaxants over again. Tubocurine first. Now, we've said that this acts like a block, but in fact, this is only partly true. For some acetylcholine does get through. But not enough to reduce potential to the low level essential. This, since acetylcholine is partly stopped, is what is termed competitive block. So we see on the oscilloscope a potential reduction quite remote from the height at which it could produce a spike. Succinylcholine and decamethonium, on the other hand, act rather differently, for both of these can reduce end plate potentials to the critical value, and in fact, cause the muscle to contract. But having done so, they simply remain. And you cannot excite the muscle again. What's more, this reduced potential spreads quite a little beyond the end plate's edge. You will not be surprised then, that what we have shown as depolarization block is known. The oscilloscope, we know, will obviously show first a spike of normal height and consequential reduced potential. Ah, uh, now from our labors to reap the fruits. Uh, let's put our relaxants into two groups, competitors and depolarizers. But some don't quite belong to either. And one more thing against this plan is that some depolarizers can act as competitors and vice versa. Just why these compounds act this way, it, it's really very hard to say. Uh, though if you look at their molecules, you may see what one might describe as a sort of family likeness. They all are rather complicated and of a similar size and shape. Two quaternary nitrogen atoms in each appear known for about a hundred years uh, to be a characteristic of agents producing muscular block. Acetylcholine follows a similar pattern, but with only one quaternary nitrogen atom, and it's only half their size. Uh, but in spite of much surmise, uh, no one knows whether to attach much significance to these facts. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, just a word before I go. There's one more thing you ought to know about suspected overdose. If ever you meet this situation, give artificial respiration.
if after this it's still not plain, you'd uh, better see the film again. Thank you.